Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us this morning or this afternoon. It depends on where you are. Happily, we are an, an events production um, company that um, hires specialists all across the world. We have events from um, from non um, nonprofits to corporate to VCs. We are just excited uh, to have this platform today to reach out to some of our, you know, some of our specialists and some of our future um, people that we like to work with. Great. Um, yeah. And today we're going to be talking about uh, writing uh, and using AI, which is something that I feel like Look, ChatGPT was the number one search term result pr oh, across so many categories in 2023. It like totally changed things. I remember the day when I started to like get messages uh, and emails like from people on like I know like on my team that or I was like, you don't you don't sound the same anymore. Like who <laughs> who is this person? Is this spam? And earlier I actually polled everyone about whether or not it was easy to spot when someone uses chat gpt in their writing first of all <laughs> a lot of people said yes and some people like but also like a lot of people were like this has never happened to me before and i was like you just couldn't spot it <laughs> well i know me you call when i saw your 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 post on linkedin at one time i said oh she's calling me. she's talking about me because yes i am i'm gonna say a victim of chat GPT because <laughs> at first I was trying to avoid it. You know, I was like, you know, taking my stand. I didn't want it to take over, but of course, you know, things involved went over time. And my cousin was like, yeah, um, you should use chat, chat GPT just cause she's like, yeah, I have a friend who is a professor at an Ivy league school who uses it. And I was like, Oh, if somebody at an Ivy league is using it, that it's okay for me to use it. So that's when I started using it. And then that's when Sarah came at me and told me I was using it incorrectly. It was not that you were using it incorrectly, but then all of a sudden mm. you sounded like, like <laughs> enthusiastically <laughs> delighted to be at your service today. And I was like, who is this? I was a newbie. I didn't know. And I was like, da -da -da. And, I, and so when I went back to my cousin, I was like, my boss said that I was, she was like, well, thank you. I don't really think you need chat GPT. I think you just need, you know, just to tighten yourself in Grammarly. And I was like, but chat GPT seems fun. I want to learn how to do it. So she was like, yeah, why don't you just, you know, just figure out how to use it. And then, so now I am here. We are in this discussion. Any type of writing, it's like, there's three stages to it. There's like, first the ideation stage of like, what am I going to write? What do I need to write about? Second being like the construction stage of like actually writing it. And then the last stage is the, is the edit of that. I think that AI could be good for any of those three stages, but it can't be like a hundred, you can't just like a hundred percent depend on AI to like come up with your ideas for what to write. Mm -hmm. Cause then I agree. you're I agree. generic and that's yes. definitely not what we're trying to do here. I mean, like happily creates like, you know, and celebrates uniqueness and diversity. Yes. And the minute you give the AI the microphone for, you know, just like, or like the, the ability to create what you're going to say, yes. ooh, troubles, right? Construction, yeah. you know, sure. <laughs> but like, do you notice how like, it, like ChatGPT is always like one, two, three, four, yes. bullet point yes. list, and or like the headers? I That's don't understand. A dead that. Giveaway. Yes, that is. That a is dead giveaway. You know what else is a dead giveaway? Which I used to do it. And now I take it out of my emails because I'm like, I don't want them to think that it's a chat. It's like, hi, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well. I used to say that, but now <laughs> it's when I like revamp in chat GPT, I say, oh man, look at they took my slogan. So I gotta take it back. I gotta take my writing back and figure out like, hey, what's up? Like, it's like, I know, like I, you're constantly like, Danielle, put it in your words. And now I'm, like I said, I'm finding myself sounding like GPT when I write because what was it yesterday? You said I sound like a Hallmark card. And I was like, but no, <laughs> Sarah, I, I actually wrote that. I was trying to be like, but it, I don't know if that's helping me, but you're like, no, Danielle, put it in your words. And I'm like, okay. Um, sure. So, you know, you, you still calling me out every single day that, you know, I, 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 I just really think, and you know what, pre chat GPT, 
um, I used snippets like and I use snippets like a lot. And so I'll ask myself even like I have a snippet on my iPhone on my desktop everything where I literally type in the word block time. It's two words. I type it in as what one word and it says it spits out automatically. Please block time convenient for you to have a meeting with me according to your schedule link calendly.com slash happily Sarah. So like I, uh -huh. I have used snippets, but like I created that myself. And there were times where you, I would like use those snippets and I would intentionally mistype a word so that it mm. looked like a person was writing it. Or I would leave like sent with iPhone so that you would think that I didn't like labor over this message to folks and I needed it to feel more casual. And so like, I, I, I've always been like pretty like open, you know, to sort of like having technology, like help you and facilitate, but yeah. also been pretty strong about making sure that people always felt like it was coming from me, even if yeah. I didn't type every single letter out. Well, I'm still a beginner. I am like some things you like to be an expert at, and I'm going to admit and claim it. I am still a beginner of chat GBT. So if there is any, there are any how to's I've been even on Instagram, there are like a lot of how to's on how to utilize GP, GP, chat GBT. And I've been taking advantage of, I watch those clips every time because I'm like, I am not about to get called out this week. Like I have a tally of how many times Sarah calls me out. Do you using really? AI. Yes, I do. Because I'm like, okay, it I got to like four I gotta times, finesse. Like three or four times. <laughs> I got to finesse and figure out. But I will say like, I'm starting, like I do, like when I was talking to my cousin, I was like, hey, how, you know, my boss called me out. She's like, well, she's like, Jack, like you said, it's not supposed to replace you. Just you supposed to, you know, try to get more ideas. You throw in your creativity, let it jazz it up. And then you take, you know, you take the best out of what is there that you think is good and apply it to your net, you know, your project or whatever. And, you know, I remember one time I was just so busy and I said, chat GPT, write me an email just saying, thank you for da da da. And I sent the email and I was walking away. And then you were like, Danielle, I know what you did. And I was like, oh, dang. she called me out. And I was wondering, I wonder if the person. Remember that <laughs> time where I was like, I was like, I was like, at least I was like, try to hide it. You know, like at least like throw in like in the voice of Michelle Obama oh my. or something. You remember we did it yes. for Beyonce? Yes, we did it for Beyonce. And I told you, I said, no, Sarah. Because that was funny. Chat GPT makes, it's kind of, it's still learning. It's still developing, but it's very stereotypical when it comes to other you know, ethnic groups. Okay, wait, I I looked up the Beyonce. This is the Beyonce thing that we were uh, practicing that I, I asked through writing in Beyonce voice. Hey, Sarah, hope you're doing fabulous, honey. Just wanted to <laughs> slide into your inbox and say, hey, nice to meet you. Now, first of all, I don't even know if Beyonce sounds like that. Number two, oh, wait, my Siri activated for her to say it. But I don't even know if Beyonce sound like that. And that is so stereotypical. And I told you it sound like Austin Powers. Like, there Honey, needs to sugar. Be <laughs> yes. And I'm like, who uses that in their turn? I can see if we're in family, you know, back with your family and you're using like, hey, girl, but not professional. When I'm like trying to rewrite it in a Beyonce voice just to, you know, just to cater to my, to, to, to make it feel like more like me but there needs to be an avenue, a platform for that. I do think that like AI can be, has issues with sort of like tone of voice unless we train it. And mm -hmm. that's what Matt can talk to us about. Matt mm -hmm. Tate is a tone of voice and brand alignment expert. Um, he's worked with everyone from like individual solopreneurs to big global like conglomerates with his creative agency, Banana Stand. And he's one of our, like uh, one of the people that we call on frequently for uh, senior level like copywriting and script writing here at Happily. Out of his work with uh, with Banana Stand, he recently, um, like hot recent, co-founded a new project. Get this, I love this. I, this. I think it's me because I'm a mom and I sing this song all the time. His <laughs> new project is called A-I-E-I-O. How great is that? Um, and it leverages the power of AI to provide equity for non-native uh, speakers, 
um, as well as like small businesses and side hustlers to really help them market their products and services to a broader audience. And so welcome, Matt. So well, Matt, you're a writer that's gotten actually like really enthusiastic mm -hmm. about AI. And do you think everyone should be using AI to help with their writing? Or are there only certain people that should be using it? I think everyone should be using it eventually. I kind of think about it like a calculator. It's really helpful, but if you give it to a five and six and seven year old, they're never really going to learn how to do math. They're not going to be able to even just do basic counting of change at their first job. It's uh, a tool that speeds things up and is powerful, uh, but it's too easy to be used as a crutch. That's the first issue I have with sort of everyone using it. That said, if you know how to use it and why you're using it, um, I think it's a tool that people can use for business, for their personal lives, for just an absolutely endless uh, amount of reasons. So, yeah. Okay. So how do you use it? Mm. As uh, a writer, Matt, as yeah, a writer. I started using it to actually generate concepts more than anything. That was my initial, because generally when you're doing creative work, whether it's writing or, or uh, designing or whatever, coming up with the concepts is, is often as hard or harder than actuating them, doing the actual writing or designing or whatever, just the brainstorming. And because it's a sort of giant hive mind and it knows so much history of, say, advertising copy or whatever, it was able to take a prompt like generate um, 20 ideas for a brand that sells, you know, whatever to whoever. And it was fairly clever at a good starting point. It was like having a, a really smart person sitting across the table from you. So that was my initial purpose. But what I found out recently is like you guys were talking about the tone of voice because I specialize in tone of voice, everything it was giving me was a little homogenous and bland um, and even predictable at some point um, as you were talking about. And so now I'm using it a little more actively with a myopic view of just the user who is using it at that moment. Like come up with ideas um, for this project, but you are a 43 year old male in California who does this and all these types of things. And uh, that's led me to my new project um, is going, how can we use AI not as a view of the entire world, but within context of each user's specific needs. That's where I think the power is. For and right. how do you get the data yeah. for like the user per se? Like right. again, you that's, know. So that's the whole AIEIO thing. Currently it's been manual. For the last three years, I, through Banana Stand, do a whole intake process. That's the service that I offer is this long form interview that then creates a guide which you can feed to ChatGPT. What we're doing now is automating that to where anyone who wants to use this, they sign up, it asks them a series of questions, which they answer, and it creates their digital fingerprint, so to speak. It's really their own custom algorithm. And it asks you more than just general demographics, like your age and whatever, but it really dives into the personality um, on how you speak. And what it does is it creates this sort of impulse response, which is the difference between generic speaking and you. And when it generates content for you, it actually sounds like you. It's your differences, the fact that you are funny or that you are serious or that you use puns or you use dirty words or you're concise or you're wordy or whatever, all these things. And you tell it by simply chatting with it, hmm. it's taking this information. And because it's an algorithm and not an actual group of vocab or anything, what happens is that it knows your personality and you can say, okay, write this blog in my style in Chinese or in Spanish or whatever else. And it doesn't take your words and translate them, which ends up in broken language and funky stuff. It writes natively using your personality as the difference. And, and this is where it becomes really powerful. You train it, but that's what we're working on is a system where it's so easy, you don't even realize you're training it. It mm, speaks to you conversationally and you're just chatting with it and your answers are forming this training. You could put in uh, an archetype of a Beyonce or whatever you'd like, if you'd like, but it's certainly more powerful that it learns your personality. Yeah. And when you log in and ask it, it's only speaking as you would. Could be on any subject that maybe you don't know anything about. 
but it'll still be um, from your specific tone of voice. And so that's what we're using AI to do is to skip the middleman, which is me having to do the whole interview and build the guide and then input it. We think that for most people's purposes, maybe not giant corporations uh, yet, but for most people's purposes, telling it that you um, are older or younger or a parent or not, or speak to this type of person or that answering these questions, it will already generate something that sounds so much closer to what you're doing that it's it's just a huge leap forward. And Danielle, you were mentioning that you do it in ChatGPT and then into Grammarly. Because it's a uh, an AI and it's a computer that's writing it, you also can, for the most part, skip that Grammarly step. It's already, if it's being written and you know to be read on the page, it's already going to be grammatically correct to begin with. There's really, you might comb through for style, but yeah, I think that it'll really speed up the process. You have to do that intake, but once the intake is complete, uh, you can do that. And there's sort of like a feed me function where over time, if you grow or change, you can, you know, hey, actually now it's, we're partners in this business, not just me. And it changes maybe the eyes to wheeze in the language when it's writing, things like that. So Matt, do you think like AI is here to stay because it could be just like, remember back in the day, a couple yeah. of years, 3D televisions, everybody yeah. was, those were supposedly flying off the shelf. Everybody yeah. had glasses. That was the new wave. Now people are like, no yeah. one has 3D. Is chat, well, is AI here to stay? Good. That you, you actually asked the right thing at the very end. ChatGPT is just a brand. It's just one of the models that's out there. AI is clearly here to stay because it's been here for a really long time. If you've ever stopped at a red light, you've used AI. If you've ever used self-checkout or even a barcode at all anywhere, you've used AI. If you've gotten a bunch of apples at the store that are all red and the same size, you've used AI. It's been here. This is just a new platform and a new way for the general public to use it. So yeah, there's no question on, on the longevity at all. Whether it becomes a professional tool or a personal tool and how long that conversion takes. That's the stuff, you know, to really speculate on, but it's lasting power is uh, clear. Do you think like, how are you, how are you sure like, like that your tool will be able to be really like additive to folks mm -hmm. process instead of like taking up like more time, you know, yeah. like sometimes I feel like people just writing an email, even if it's imperfect, like getting it out in right. one minute versus writing the perfect email with all these tools <laughs> in 30 yeah. minutes is just counter productive. It's sort of like taking a walk or going in the car. It's just around the corner. You know, you're going to have to find parking or whatever else. You have to understand the context that you're using it in that day. For instance, uh, the auto correct and the auto write in your phone, it's supposed to speed things up. How often are we hitting backspace and deleting the stupid words that it added? It doesn't really make a lot of sense. I, I think right now the tool that we're building because it's specifically geared towards small businesses isn't necessarily for short email blasts and stuff, although it can be used for that. It's more for writing your about page, writing your homepage copy, writing your mission statement, writing your uh, copy for your packaging, um, all sorts of stuff like that where people have paralysis and don't move forward with their business at all because they go, I don't even know how to do an about page or how do I describe my services, especially if they're not a native speaker of that language. Someone who is opening uh, a restaurant, let's say here in LA, that comes from uh, another country might have a lot to say about why they cook the way they do and all these things, but they don't want to write because they know they sound lesser than when they translate into English. This will allow the passion to come through in any language or the knowledge and, and of these specialty items to come through. So I think it's going to be powerful for the big stuff. It's going to be a powerful blaster of roadblocks. Um, whether or not it becomes part of daily life and texting and stuff, I don't really know. And that's not my focus at the time. I also think like Danielle said earlier, that as you start to use ChatGPT, you accidentally start writing like <laughs> ChatGPT. The same thing with Grammarly. The longer you have it installed in your computer, the less it does because it teaches you to write better. So I would hope that that might happen with this as well, where as you get used to it writing in your voice, perhaps when you write, you will also start to do it better, even on small things like texts or interim office emails, et cetera. Danielle, I mean, what do you think? Do you feel like you are going to be a better writer now? Um, I think, you know, this is me. 
I feel like I am a good writer. AI will help enhance that. Um, it just, to me, I think more create creatively. I know with the um, the writer's strike, that was a big deal. Like, is it going to replace the writers? I think from my opinion, personal opinion, it's how you use it. I think like, I want to be, I want to write, continue writing, writing books and all that stuff, movie scripts. So I would think of everything in I have never done this in ChatGPT or any of the AI, but I would like to see how it does. Like if I write a, a short, a movie short, how does it translate? I put the idea, what I want, the people. And I think that's where, you know, the industry is going. I don't know. We don't know. It's the unknowns. But that's how I, in the future, plan on trying to utilizing it and so just as a time-saving event, like, so for instance, uh, all of these language models, they know uh, Pastor and SWOT and all of these things that we've all been using, which you can learn from books on how to structure things. In fact, even just basic story structuring, that mm -hmm. information is out there mm -hmm. by putting your idea for a short in and it structuring it as a film would be, it's really just doing what's already available to you just faster and for free. Yeah. Right. I mean, so that really, as you just described it, is just a time saving um, mm -hmm. device, which yeah. is great. I mean, you know, we pay a lot of money for all sorts of time saving yeah. devices. Um, we're, we're always tasting time. <laughs> so. Right. I think this is true. Like, I mean, the question of like, is I going to replace me? That's the big, that's one of the big fears, right? Whether that's in, in the creative field, whether that's graphics or music, writing. I mean, we hear this like over and over again. Yeah. And also I feel like we continue to hear over and over again from folks who are adeptly using these AI tools is that uh, it's assisting them, not, you know, replacing. Right, the people who are using it are the ones saying, no, you have to be open to the fact that it's not some alien technology that is uh, <laughs> coming to get us. You know, it's like with sewing machines during the uh, Industrial Revolution or or anything else, people are always fearing the things that they don't know. When you ask people who use this all day, is it going to replace you? Most of them would say no. And they were the ones actually using it. Unless so. you let it. Unless yes. you let AI write everything for you, then yeah, you have consented to let the computer speak for you. And you should be worried about that, right? right? Well, so, dummy is going to be a dummy. What are you going to do? You know, um, so I think that that's really important too. Just like um, play with the tools, learn mm -hmm. how to yeah. um, use them be critical about them um, the same way that you have to actually like be critical and train. It's, it's called training AI. I think it's like also being critical with it, letting it know yeah. what's working and what's not working. We're yeah, still very, we're, we're still very in the early days um, of what this is going to be able to do. And, um, and also, you know, we're, we haven't even like gotten into like AI avatars and like really talking mm. about all of that once we get into generative AI. And so, um, I do think that like anyone learning how to build a tone of voice profile, you know, writing profile for yourself, like now and today is going to like help accelerate you for the, yeah. that moment when you do kind of like let the computer go and run with your persona right. um, within environments that you allow it to. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Have you asked ChatGPT or any of these to take a deep breath? <laughs> no, that's so no. funny. When you when you prompt it to do something, you know, write this for me or whatever, take a deep breath before answering. You should the when you were just talking about how to train it, there are so many controls and things that the coders who are working on this stuff are building in all the time that there's no fanfare about. Um, the deeper we get into the prompting, you find that AI is not writing, right? It's just it's it's taking prompts and doing stuff you really are uh, becoming a prompter instead of a writer the more you work with this type of thing and the abstract things that you feed into it um, make it much more interesting and that's the human component that it wouldn't do on its own you really have to say take a deep breath and wait a second before you answer like you would to a colleague or maybe even a kid or something like before you freak out that's that's where this stuff gets really interesting and, and um, you can't look away. Anyway, you should try it. Try to do the deep breath. I will. I, I'm on the other end of end of things where I'm like, spit it out faster, spit it out faster. <laughs> you can do that too. I often will tell it, um, give me a vocab, you know, 50 word vocab list for this brand. Do not give me explanations. 
bullet points, numbers, or anything, words only. I tell it that all the time, mainly because people say that to me. So I, I take what, uh, the criticisms that I get and give it back to the machine because it never complains. But yeah, you go, <laughs> you, you can tell it, be more concise. Um, be uh, be more curt with your answers. You know, I can take it. I think it's weird that people say, please. Please I generate. do say please. I like to be polite. My mother taught me with manners. So, and my husband always calls me out. He'd be like, why are you thanking them? Why are you saying please? I'm like, Supposedly, well, you know, you never know when they take over the world. You know, I'm just saying. That's one they thought. Spare me. <laughs> that's one thought. Supposedly it generates different results um, because its tone is more reflective of how you prompt it. These are things that we just don't know yet unless you're really working at one of these companies and talk to the engineers and go, what what Easter eggs are you building in here? Like the deep breath, for instance. Well, Thank you, Matt, for joining us today. It was fun having um, having a special guest. Please, um, if you're working in media or in events, please join our happily teamhappily.com careers and follow us on um, Instagram and all of our social platforms at Team Happily. Yes, Thank thanks you. for joining us, everyone. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays, everyone.